Um, okay. I'm good. I have one. Go. I have two, as a matter of fact. Thank you. Thank you for thinking. Yeah, so, like, oh, yeah. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Tim. If you have your presentation on, on your on a thumb drive, you can use it on the computer and no one can use it. I do not. Okay. I think thumb drives worked. He needs two. No, yeah, he needs two. Okay. I'm good with one. I, you're going to make you pay. It's hard. You have a pen? I emailed it to Nick. How are you? If you have it, yeah, well, then you have an email. You can pull it up from there, right? Yours is out. What's going on? That's right. I can tell you. You told me I needed a thumb drive. Oh. You can open it up. All right, we'll see. So, how are you able to just click? Let's try it. We're patient. We don't expect it. Yeah. All right, and then you can go backwards. Okay. And this syncs with the uh, yeah. I saw the dumb tab. Yeah. TV. Yeah. That's what we find. So I, I emailed it to him. True. But he told me he may need it. Oh, all right. So I didn't hit it here. I emailed it to him. Is it amazing to get those things approved? I have a work copy. I'm like, this is so cool. What else? What else? What else? What does this do? What does this one do? Yeah. So she can start on the Okay. 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 Okay.
Sure, because you know it makes everybody happy. Now it looks like we're good. So far, so good. What? <laughs> you guys doing that? Everything. <laughs> everything. It wouldn't be. You're gonna miss that one day. <laughs> everybody, uh, ready to go? Let's go. Are we good? Yeah. Ted? <clears throat> Good. Pleasure, Michael? Yes, yes sir. sir. Are we live on TV? It's Memorex. We're good to go. Okay. <clears throat> so I'd like to call the council meeting of Tuesday, April 9th, 2024 to order. We're going to start out with hearing budget presentations from police department, fire department, and office of emergency management. And I think we are going to start with <laughs> Chief Wicker. Good evening, Good evening Chief. Good evening. Um, so, for the purposes of tonight's meeting, I was uh, asked to present a uh, short uh, synopsis of my overall budget via PowerPoint, and um, that's what we're going to do. Um, I previously submitted a six or seven page uh, written synopsis to the council and my operating and capital budgets. Um, with that said, we'll do a, a synopsis. In the police department budget, we have uh, obviously our salary and wages line uh, item, uh, line items. Uh, currently, the police department consists of 22 members. We're down two officers uh, from our requested manpower of 24 members. Uh, we've been trying to keep uh, the department of 24 members, but uh, every time we get to 24, uh, we get a retirement. And, uh, so 23 has been uh, more of the uh, norm number uh, with the hopes of getting 24. Um, currently, we're in the process of uh, hiring one officer uh, with my public safety committee. We uh, uh, have an officer that's going through the background process and hopefully be uh, ready for the July 19th uh, police academy. Um, but I would like to uh, hire another officer in 2025. Um, we also consist of uh, one civilian secretary, one class one officer, and approximately 12 crossing guards um, and substitutes. Our uh, PBA contract was settled in 2023 for the years 2024 20, through 27. Um, crossing guards and class one have requested a $1 raise in uh, this year's budget. They did request the raise last year, but unfortunately it wasn't able to be approved. Um, I'm hopeful that the council would consider a $1 raise for our guards and uh, class one. Um, I've also submitted a request for a police, uh, a captain promotion. Uh, we currently have two lieutenants in the police department. The captain position has been vacant for approximately eight years now, and uh, I'd like to speak further with the Public Safety Committee about a captain promotion. Um, our uh, police overtime has again come in on their budget, so I did not request uh, any increases in that line item uh, for this year. And our reimbursed account, <clears throat> which is uh, 015 in the uh, your um, handouts. Um, that's all of our traffic details for infrastructure projects and uh, a lot of the fees that are collected um, for fire permits, parking permits, etc. That continues to be a real positive uh, for the borough and the department. <clears throat> the overall uh, portion of our police department uh, is our operating budget. Um, I have multiple accounts in uh, the operating budget, uh, approximately 10 accounts, uh, 
seven of the ten accounts truly have enough funding in it to properly pay um, the items that are listed in those accounts. Um, in 2023, uh, budget cuts were needed, so I needed to um, submit a flat budget, and uh, I had to take from several accounts to uh, to offset the vendor increases. So for this year, I didn't really. Um, I'm essentially su submitting my 23 budget uh, once again with the vendor increases uh, that are uh, noted in our 029 contra uh, contractual account. Um, those are all our <coughs> vendors that help the police department uh, um, uh, function throughout the year. Um, but, uh, you know, last year with the cuts, our training account, our supplies account, and uh, equipment purchase and miscellaneous accounts suffered from the cuts. And I'm asking the council to take a look at the budget for this year, which is essentially my 23 budget. Uh, training accounts, extremely important. Uh, we pay for classes for officer, mandatory training and developmental training. Our supplies account, um, this account is just our yearly su supplies, but half of this accounts for our ammunition costs. and. Uh, since COVID, ammunition costs have really increased uh, uh, quite significantly, and uh, having the proper funding in the supply account uh, would certainly help. Um, and like I said, the remaining accounts in operating truly have enough uh, funding to uh, cover costs throughout the year. Um, also in our budget account is our patrol vehicle account. It's a, noted in 217, account number 217. Currently, um, we have no payments remaining. We own all our police vehicles. So I did request two police Tahoes for this year's budget, um, and they're normally <coughs> financed over a three-year uh, finance, uh, one payment uh, per year. Um, and in the past, we've always rotated uh, older model police vehicles to either another department in town that may need uh, uh, an extra vehicle, or even better, we auction uh, at our yearly auction to offset any costs for the, uh, the cost towards the purchase of a new vehicle. Moving on to capital. Um, I have um, just three projects for this year. Um, I do want to quickly just give you a summary here. Hand the hand hand. One. This is the, uh, the summary page of Capital. The only reason I'm handing them out tonight, I know you have them, is that Sorry. during the last few weeks we've kept uh, meeting with different vendors for our projects. so. Our, our capital project one, um, our current patrol laptops are tough books. Um, they're in our patrol vehicles. They're no, no longer being man manufactured by our current vendor, Panasonic. Uh, the current model is being discontinued. Um, generally, it wouldn't be an issue. Um, we could purchase the new laptops, but Panasonic has advised us that um, their new model um, will not fit the docks that are currently in the vehicles. So it turned into a little bit of a project to get all new laptops and all new docks. Um, this project is seven new laptops, including the seven docks with three, uh, I need three extra InfoCop licenses. The InfoCop licenses allow the officers to do uh, NCIC and New Jersey Division of Motor Vehicle lookups from their vehicle. Um, so we did inquire with different vendors and for this project, um, we're going to give a, a new vendor. Um, it's uh, GTAC, and GTAC has a semi-rugged model laptop. Um, the pricing is a lot better than originally uh, uh, quoted by Panasonic. The GTACs are currently used by the Bergen County Sheriff's Department, so we inquired with them, and they have also given us the thumbs up on the semi-rugged model. Um, and for, for our purpose, uh, the, 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 the laptops don't have to come in and out of the car as much as uh, maybe other divisions, especially the military. And um, 
I'd like to give this model a, a try, and the cost is also about 14000 less than uh, originally quoted on that project. Uh, second project, <coughs> similar, same thing. Our tasers have been in, in we, we have, we've had our tasers since 2016, the Model X2, and uh, we've been notified by our vendor, Axon, that uh, the model is no longer going to be manufactured. The tasers are, con are, tasers are conducted energy devices that are designed to provide police officers with a less lethal option when responding to police citizen encounters that potentially could escal escalate to a deadly force situation. Um, it's time to upgrade the tasers after the eight years, um, especially that this model is not being uh, manufactured at this time or after J March 31st, uh, 2024. So if we could purchase the new tasers, um, we got a quote also on this uh, that was significantly less than, than originally quoted as well, about 12,000 less. So we're trending in the right direction on the costs. And that's indicated on the, the printout that I just, just gave you. And then the final capital budget project is uh, we, we need to replace three desktop computers, two of which are in the uh, detective bureau and one in the police processing area. I had to replace two others last year. Um, a lot of the issues arose with the 2023 Windows 11 upgrade. Um, and um, replacing those three comp uh, computers would include uh, Microsoft Office licenses. Um, and I felt like doing three in one shot with the licenses would be best done in a smaller capital project. And that is all I have on the police end uh, in a summary. Any questions? Quick question. How many tough books um, computers are you looking at? Seven. Okay. <clears throat> and tasers? Tasers? Let me, I just have to look at the quote. Twenty-four thousand. So. No, no. That was, uh, there's um, holsters. Everybody needs their ho their own holster, but we would just purchase six tasers. Okay. That's enough for the department. Um, we cycle them in them out. But everybody has to get their holsters. There's left-handed holsters, <laughs> right-handed holsters. These are also more of like a, a, a hard plastic form. Probably. We, we do unload it. Okay. Any other questions? Chief, is there a, um, why is there a delay between the body-worn camera contract for two years? I'm looking at the total four-year, but our first payment, is that how that's structured for 26? Yeah, um, on the, did I adjust it on the new one differently from the one you have? There looks like there's no payment 24, no payment 25. The first payment of 25,000 is in 20, 2026. That's, that's when we're up to okay. our, our new contract is Got up it. to our contract. Expires. So nothing 24, nothing 25, it kicks in. Well, what, what happened was we were able to secure a grant. Yeah. Um, and Katie was managing on how she wanted to allot the funding okay. for that. So once we needed to get the body one count, uh, cameras under the attorney general mandate, we secured funding and it lowered our capital, the, the need for how much capital we needed. So at this time, we're on the contract. We should have the funds, right, Katie? We don't have we to do. put in mm -hmm. anymore until 26. Okay. And the 26 of 25,000, currently we were paying uh, 18,200 a year for our five-year deal. Yeah, I just estimated yeah, that I'm sure it's, it's going to be at it's least 25000 a year. Yep. Okay. And, and we're not needed until twenty six. And, okay. Chief, we're deferring the um, alcohol test machine, too? Yes. The last update I have is um, <clears throat> the the new alcohol test machine that's going to be coming, and this has been going on in years. I've put this in the budget, out of the budget, and in the budget, out of the budget for, for five years now. Um, just based on what the state police is reporting and the attorney general is reporting. Um, Right now, it's currently being used in, in the southern portions of the state, specifically Monmouth and Ocean Counties, and developing case law. 
We've got a little bit more concrete information recently that Bergen won't see the new alcohol test till probably 26. So I'm saying now the cost also is not $12,000. The cost is 24,000. Mm -hmm. But I previously, um, the prosecutor's office gave us the okay if we wanted to um, use our county forfeiture funds for alcohol test. They're pretty strict on what you can use county uh, forfeiture funds for, but the idea was being if the alcohol test is up to twenty four thousand, I take half, use twelve thousand forfeited funds and twelve thousand in capital to keep the cost down. Okay, was, great. Was the idea? Thank you. Anything else? <clears throat> Just one quick question on the body cam. So we have funding through a grant, but it's an annual expense, right? How does a contract work? Do they give you new units if they break or? Yeah. I'm just wondering why it's a capital versus an operating. The the original cost was a five year deal. Let's say it was about 92,000. Okay. So we felt the, the best way to pay for it was 18,200 a year as a five-year capital project. Okay. Um, the funding came after you signed the contract. You had to secure the funding with the, with the state, right. and then the state basically essentially reimbursed you. And I believe we received 50000 from from the Attorney General's office okay. in, in grant funding for okay. this project. So essentially, the project only cost us a 42 over the five years. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the contract, the agreement was halfway through the five years, about two and a half years, all the officers would turn in their body one cameras and receive brand new ones, which we just received today. <laughs> and uh, they're being implemented as we speak. Okay. So that, that's, that's the, uh, that was the deal with um, WatchGuard, which is now, it started with WatchGuard and since Motorola has purchased WatchGuard, they're okay. now the vendor. So it's the equipment and service. We're just splitting the payments out over the co the life of the contract. Correct. Essentially. Great. With grant funds, and I do not know after this contract is it ends November 1, 26, um, if there will be further grant funding like the sure. first round. I okay. hope there is, but I'm not certain. Right. Does anybody have any more questions for the chief? Nope. Nope. Thank you. Chief, thank you very much. Well, thank you. One second. Oh, you have it? I have an updated version of the Okay. Yeah, all you have to do is plug this one in, plug this cable into yours. Okay. I'll take one, Terry. <laughs> oh, is that upgraded from this one? I not sure what that is. Uh, it's in the packet. In the, uh, Probably a few months old. We've had these for a few months. months. Okay. Terry. Yeah. Anyone who's got more money requested um, what's it. What's in the binder is other old, old numbers. <laughs> so we should take these out, Katie? Yeah, yeah. To replace the, the new sheets, yes. Do you have yes. the screen outcome? Okay. So okay. Okay. Um, yeah, let me see if that's not. Uh... Thanks, Terry. Should we go back to your laptop? Yeah. 
Real quick. On I just got the one that you sent with the uh, there you go. email. You're up. You're good, Joe. There you go. All right. Oh, no, I think we're, we were working. Did, we, did you? Yep. All right, yep. go yep. again. <laughs> To start, uh, I just want to say I'm uh, very proud to represent the uh, men and women of the Ordo Fire Department here this evening uh, to talk about our 2024 uh, operating and capital budgets. Um, you probably know, basically, I think we, we recently had a uh, new member being sworn here, and you know, I had the, the opportunity to talk for a couple of minutes. And um, the place where I'd like to start again is our department is very active in recruiting, right? So. So I'd like to just kind of use this moment to reinforce that. Anybody who happens to be watching tonight, if they uh, have any interest in volunteering in something that I believe is an extremely rewarding way to help the citizens of our town, uh, there are websites there. Feel free to stop at the firehouse any Monday night. I'm very happy also to, uh, to say that today we had, I had the privilege of dropping off another application uh, to Laura's office. Um, and hopefully soon we'll have another swearing in um, here in this room for a, uh, a female firefighter um, who joins her brother uh, on our department and a legacy uh, of a family uh, in our fire department. So we're very active, looking forward to it, and I encourage anyone who may have any interest to uh, please uh, look us up. So that's where I wanted to start. Um, so I will uh, try to be very succinct and talk to uh, what we are proposing for an operating budget as well as a capital budget for 2024. So I'll start with the operating side. And instead of going line by line, I'm sure you have the line by line, uh, I thought what I would do is highlight kind of the more significant uh, items that we're focused on from an operating side. So we are proposing a modest increase um, that's really reflective of some of the things I'm going to talk about, reflective of increasing costs, and something that we think is a, um, uh, a reasonable and a, um, an appropriate uh, increase in operating. So, and these, I'd say, are they are, they are minimized by offsets, right? So we are uh, very uh, aware of the challenges that face the borough and uh, face everyone. So we're trying to really look at this in a way that we think is, um, is appropriate and responsible. So the three items that I really just want, kind of want to focus on that are unique this year than maybe what we've done in the past, um, one involves our operating software. So the fire department has software. We, we have different, different types of software for different applications. Our kind of core software that we use to log in every one of our calls and utilize that software to report and upload to the state in a manner and in a, and in a format that's required. Um, that software, we've, it's, it's, the costs have remained the same for uh, over 10 years. And what's happened is that the vendor was acquired a couple of years ago. The purchaser is now looking to raise the cost and the price of that software to match what they perceive as the value in the market. So we are in the process of, uh, we have a couple of options. One is to renew with them at a, uh, a significantly higher price, but we're also looking at other vendors um, to really see what's the best way, what kind of meets our needs now and into the future. Um, also looking at the different costs and part of doing this will give us the opportunity to combine other vendors we have into one kind of universal uh, operating system. So that, from an operating side, could have a, you know, more of a, a significant to the extent of around $7,000, um, which is something we hadn't, we, that type of an increase is something that's not normal in, in the normal operating budget. We're also looking to onboard a, um, a part-time administrative resource. This is something that I'd say is uh, long overdue. Um, hey, no problem. Uh, Assistant Chief Moretti is, uh, is joining me. Uh, 
Uh, you heard the whistle before. He's Hard at work. Where he was. Yeah, where were you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Came in as a smoke condition at a house. Luckily, it was a uh, outside leaf fire. Yep. So we're on the operating budget. Excellent. Okay. This is nice of you to give the chief and I credit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he signed you in. Don't worry. Um, <clears throat> so I was on the part time resource. So. Um, like you know, like most organizations, we have a growing burden from an administrative standpoint, and especially from a volunteer organization. So, uh, what we what we would like to do is to um, do things like digitizing our records and um, really having a a resource that'll help make sure that training records are appropriately. Um, retained and you know one of the challenges we have even from from like a training perspective there are a lot of requirements on the fire department in terms of uh, reporting certificates and things like that down to the state and you know one of the so this resource would be responsible to help us really kind of maintain the day-to-day -day administrative function of the of the operating the fire department and uh, you know, it's the way I kind of describe it is similar to, I think, what happens in the borough is for the fire department, from an officer standpoint, we normally, on average, turn over every couple of years. So we have this constant knowledge transfer that has to happen, especially for the administrative tasks. And what we would like to do, and I think, I think at a, it's a smaller scale from, I think, what happens here at the town, right? So similar to the elected officials that turn over a certain period of time, the town has administrative resources in the town in terms of the, in the employees to kind of manage the day-to-day. -day -day. So in a sense, we're looking at that at a much smaller, a smaller scale, obviously, to be able to have a resource that helps us maintain continuity, business practices, um, that, uh, you know, enable us, enable us to effectively, you know, kind of manage the administrative side of the fire department year over year um, in, a, uh, in an area that has a, a I'd say, a growing burden. So I um, think that would be a real positive thing for us uh, and a positive thing for the borough. And uh, the last piece is just a recognition that while we are looking at these two areas where we have a, uh, you know, a slight increase, um, we also have a, a continued focus on uh, apparatus and equipment maintenance, right? So uh, our apparatus is getting older. Um, it's requiring uh, more maintenance. Um, you're I'm sure very well aware our, our ladder right now has a, we had to, we have a significant investment to do a repair. You know, our ladder right now is 21 years old, but so the average, the average age of our apparatus is 16 and a half, and we have a growing list of items that require maintenance. So on that end, that increases, uh, that causes a bit of pressure uh, on our maintenance. But on the other side of it, we do have a, uh, our, our engineer in the department spends a considerable amount of time doing in-house repairs. And it, it, just as an example, very recently, one of our trucks needed an alternator. Um, you know, the approach basically was for us to go out and buy the alternator, and our engineer spent, I think it was a Saturday, at the DPW putting it in all day, um, you know, taking the day to put the uh, alternator in. So that saves the town, that's just an example, that saves the town uh, a good amount of money for what he works on all year long. So um, we're trying to balance these needs with uh, our own in-house resources, and we're very fortunate to have a person who has the skills uh, to be able to do this. So that's the operating. I'll just move to the capital, and we can, I guess, take questions at the end. All right, from a capital side, I have really kind of four categories I'd like to talk about. Uh, the first is uh, PPE, and this is something that is you know, kind of pretty standard and something we, uh, we look to every year. We're proposing $25,000 to purchase and replace turnout gear and swift water gear. So it's firefighter turnout gear and aging swift water gear, both to enable uh, compliance with the NFPA and to outfit uh, new measures, so new members. So, you know, as I kind of started, the department has been very fortunate to um, have a good, a good amount of new members coming in. Uh, we are obligated uh, to provide them turnout gear that is compliant. Um, and at the same vein, uh, on the swift water side, we are going out 
on a lot more water calls, as everybody knows, right? We spend a lot more time in town measuring the, uh, the levels of the reservoir and what's happening at the spillover. And the, the fallout of that is the fire department spends a lot of time responding to calls, and a lot more than we did 20 years ago. And our swift water gear is aging. So we're, we are looking for a $25,000 uh, uh, capital line, and that'll supplement the recently awarded $20,000 uh, grant that we received to purchase uh, turnout gear. Now, turnout gear, just to give you a sense, costs about, from head to toe, about $6,000 a firefighter. It's in that, it's in that realm. Just a jacket and, and bunker <coughs> pants are about 5000 Then you layer on it a helmet, you layer on boots, you layer on gloves, you're probably around $6,000. And, you know, we have, and turn up your last 10 years, according to the NFPA. So we, um, we're in need of continuously upgrading because we have some, you know, it ages out, and we are fortunate to have new members, and we need to outfit them with appropriate gear to go to the fire academy. Um, SCBA replacement, so our, our breathing apparatus, the specific to the air bottles, we have um, 21 air bottles that have reached the end of their life. So we're in need to be able to, uh, and that is a uh, end of life from a code perspective. So we need to replace them in 2024. Total cost is roughly $40,000. Our intent is to use 17,500 from existing capital and, you, and, and fund the replacement, the, the difference, 2020, 22.5 out of 2024 uh, capital. Third item is building improvements. We're proposing 37,500 for firehouse improvements. And these are really focused on, you know, inside the building. So there's work that has happened last year that uh, the DPW, I believe, in their budget funded for work on a cupola and work on the doors. Some of that work is ongoing still, um, as well as um, we're looking forward to work on, on the roof of the firehouse uh, this year. Um, so that's all really exterior, and but what we're focused here on is more interior things that we believe uh, need to get done at the firehouse, and some of these include uh, air conditioning in the office. Um, an exa another example that we're looking at is possibly air conditioning a gym. Uh, we're fortunate that some of our members are have, have done great work to turn some of the rear bays into a gym uh, to promote uh, health and safety for firefighters. And it gets used very regularly. Problem is, it gets pretty hot in the summer. So that's just an example. And we are looking at possible bathroom remodeling. I don't think this is the first time you've heard that. Um, and you know, so we, these are some of the things we're looking to be able to see how we can best utilize these funds to, in an attempt to improve the facilities we have uh, at the firehouse. Uh, last item is obviously the bigger ticket items involves our vehicles. So the first is uh, a replacement for engine 23. So engine 23 is a 1998 vehicle, so it's 26 years old this year. Uh, it's experiencing a growing list of repair items. And, uh, you know, we work regularly with our engineer uh, highlighting issues with the trucks. We prioritize what needs to get done. The, the list for repairs on, on this rig uh, are, are growing. And as we've uh, said, the NFPA recommendation for uh, replacement apparatus is 25 years, so we've, we're actually beyond that. So what we're proposing is an additional 550000 in 2024 to supplement 300000 that's already been approved in previous years to replace the 26-year-old engine with a new engine. Um, the purchase price of a new engine is uh, something that we've been really working to try to lower and keep as low as possible. Um, a lot of towns around are purchasing engines north of a million dollars. Um, our first estimate that we received was 1.1 million uh, to, for in, an in-kind purchase from what the town purchased uh, only five years ago. So the engine we purchased five years ago was roughly $550,000 in round numbers. The, when we went to the manufacturer and said, we want, give us a price for the same engine, it was $1.1 million. Um, our apparatus committee, um, dedicated, a dedicated group of members, have been working 
not only looking at the vendor that we're using, but also just to comparison shop to, to really, if anything, even put pressure to, uh, on the vendor to say, hey, listen, we, wanna, how do we, we have to lower this. And we've been fortunate by looking at other options that the vendor offers in terms of how ways to cut the price. And we are, the price that we're able to get is, and I, I show it there, a purchase price of eight, 818000 that's inclusive of a down payment, the discount you get from a down payment of 80%. Uh, last time we bought a truck in 2018, when we ordered it, we down pay, our down payment was roughly 75%, and you get a discount for that. So this price, though, is if the truck is ordered before uh, May 1st. If it gets ordered after May 1st, it's roughly $10,000 more. So... Um, so the way we're able to affect the reduction is by taking advantage of a program that the manufacturer has um, where you're able to limit options. And that does two things. That reduces the price. That also reduces the time for delivery. Because the other challenge is the delivery that a lot of towns are hearing now are three to four years. This gets the truck in the borough in two and a half years. And I just, uh, just want to stop you there, Keith. Uh, Katie, um, how much is the in our... Our sinking fund right now for that for the for the apparatus yeah uh, between the apparatus well right now apparatus is three hundred thousand okay and um, yeah so so we would have enough to so. cover a down payment for well I believe the down payment has to be eighty percent eighty percent or yeah, yeah but so I, we I still need you, more yeah. you, you'd have to encumber the entire purchase we do yeah right. based on the purchasing law. We have to make sure the funds is available, because according to 2018's records, we had the, the entire funding available at that time, and then we made the purchase order for 75 percent of the down payment. Okay, right. Yeah, that, that's our understanding as well. Um, so, you know, I can get into more detail with that, but that that is um, kind of the the highlights. You know, we've in there's other ways that we were able to work with them, but. Uh, that is the the price, and as I said, we're very happy. We we're we are very confident that the truck at that price is one that'll serve our needs. Uh, our apparatus committee is very satisfied with that. Um, I am very satisfied with that, and I, I believe the assistant chief is as well. So um, that would be our recommendation. And you know, the the goal for us is to have functional apparatus that's going to be able to serve our residents. And you know, I, we can talk to that more. Uh, the next one is a uh, is another replacement. So this involves our uh, utility van. So right now we have a van that is a 2010 van that primarily is used uh, to transport members to the fire academy and back. It's a utility van. It pulls boats. Uh, it takes supplies. Um, the van is kind of outlived uh, its, its application for us. And what we're proposing is to retire the van and replace it with a four-wheel drive heavy-duty pickup with a crew cab that would better support our operating needs. Um, and also, really, uh, it, it would be a crew cab and a separate cap in the back to support uh, the efforts we have around firefighter safety and health. One of the big things that we're focused on uh, in the department is, and, 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 and the whole fire service is focused on it, is cancer prevention. Um, so one of the challenges you have, even with, so we're, been, we're very lucky that we have uh, a van right now full of firefighters every, uh, every Monday and Wednesday night that go up to the fire academy. We actually have two vehicles going up because we have so many people. That is it's a blessing. But on the other side of it, from our perspective, right, we're responsible, the assistant chief and I, for, me, for ensuring the safety of our members. And one of the things that the fire service has realized is the risk you have with turnout gear that's been impregnated with smoke, with everything that's burning now is a lot of plastics and nasty stuff, that we're trying to keep that gear, number one, out of the way when it's off gassing that people could sit and breathe it. Um, and one of the way that happens is when you have an open vehicle like a van and all the gear sits in the back, back and forth, this is just an example, back and forth in the fire academy, all you're doing is breathing it. Um, 
as an example, in our command vehicles now, where we keep our, our gear has, a, has vents that, that vent directly out the bottom of the trucks. So after a fire, if we happen to be in a fire, it doesn't, that, that's not in the air inside the command vehicle. That's an example that that's happening right now just for simple things like that. And what we're trying to do is, so we had a fire a couple of weeks ago on Ordo Avenue. In a case like that, right now the members, to go back to the firehouse, have to get up and their, all their gear is inside the cab. Um, what we're looking at in one of the applications for this vehicle is it would have a separate cab, closed cab in the back with a, with a cap that all the gear would be able to go in. So when we go back, the town invested in cleaning equipment in the firehouse a couple of years ago. We're very active. We're in, in case after a fire, we wash all our gear, dry all the gear in the firehouse. It's not the way it used to be. It used to be firefighters very proud of having salty gear. Um, you know, I joked, my father's a 50-year firefighter, and he'd come home back in the day and have the gear in the back in the house. And I used to joke with him, told him I cleaned his helmet, and he wouldn't want to throw me out of the house. It's not the way it works anymore. Um, so that's just one example, but it's a, you know, right now that truck would be pulling boats. The van, as we launch boats, is really not the right truck to be able to uh, launch a boat. It can't get out of a, uh, really kind of get out of a launch. And we recognize the town, we expect to receive a vehicle from the county. That vehicle from the county will be focused on the water rescue aspect. This truck will have the ability to pull a boat. A lot of times when we respond, we don't respond with a single boat. A lot of times we respond with multiple boats. Um, but it's more than that in terms of what it could store in the back. We go to a variety of different calls and it has the ability to carry pumps, this truck would, right, with all the water issues we have. Um, could carry, help us support if there's ever a hazardous material incident. Um, we think it's a, an appropriate and natural uh, kind of evolution of what we're using from an auxiliary <coughs> truck. So we're proposing $100,000 in 2024. That would supplement 50000 of previously approved capital. When we originally proposed this, we, all, we already had, we actually had 100000 in previously approved capital, but due to the recent need to repair the tower, with, due to a hydraulic, an issue with what's a, called a hydraulic swivel underneath the turntable, 50,000 of that had to be deployed uh, for an emergency repair. So we're looking to supplement and kind of refill the coffers for that 50 and, and have another an additional 50 so that we would be able to go out and get what we think is an appropriate vehicle with a cap on the back uh, to support the needs that I just explained. So I'll pause there. That was a lot. And you know, we can uh, answer any questions you have, either on operating or our proposed capital uh, expenses. Thank you. Don't all jump at once. Um, Terry, just remind me, for the PPE, how many units are you looking to replace? We would probably, we, we need roughly six or seven units. Right. What we need to do is balance that with um, to begin start to replace the swift water gear. Right. So we'd hope we'd be able to maybe even get four sets. The swift water gear, we estimate it probably costs about two thousand dollars a set. And so, as I said, it's it's in that ballpark. So if you take these six six sets of gear right there, yeah, right, that's thirty six grand, and then. Two thousand dollars to Swift Water. That's just to, to outfit one firefighter, and we do have additional firefighters that are interested in training in Swift Water, um, and that's important for us because we're getting a lot more calls for this to support the town and to support the neighbors. Are you factoring in the potential of some of these new recruits as well? Because you're obviously getting a good amount of interest. Yeah, we are, and actually, one of the things that I, you know, we are actively looking at grants. Um, one of the things that our folks are working on this year is a grant that would uh, help us with recruiting. And uh, part of that uh, would be gear as well. So um, that is, like I said, it's a bit of a, it, it's a blessing. The, you know, we have a lot of folks focused on it. We're focused on it in every opportunity we can to try to get new members. Um, that comes with a cost. So we're kind of going at it in two different ways. Okay. Kind of base way and also see if we get a grant to help, to help us. I think, Terry, what you've presented is, is rational. 
Um, I like some of the things you're talking about, particularly with the particulates. Uh, that's to me is um, that's important because you are right. There is more particulates that you are picking up on the, on the outfits that you do. You should actually kind of keep that a little segregated when you're contained within the truck, unless you have a convertible and it's all open, which is not right. the case. Not so, um, and I think you have a real rational approach to, to the way you're managing the budget and the and your requests are are, are spot on. So. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Thank you. I just have one question. So quick to leave. Um, Got to give Joe his time. <laughs> on training, you guys ran over on 23 actual, but you re you reduced your training budget significantly, yet education dues and subscriptions went up. Is there some restructuring between those two lines that you're doing? or Well, the... the Part of what would be an education dues and subscriptions, I believe that's where we may have put the, uh, the some software. of the costs associated with the um, uh, IT changes. And on the on the training side, there's nothing more important than we do than training, right? And but one of the things we're looking at this year is relying a bit more on internal training. So. Again, it kind of recognizes we had some increases. We're looking to see how we can try to be as as uh, minimize the overall amount and how we can kind of shift in terms of how we're doing things. So the focus, that's why the, the training budget, normally that would be the last thing I'd be proposing to change. But we sat and circled as officers and said, we think we can do a lot of that in-house to try to minimize the overall increase. So just two other quick questions. The the engine that you proposed, the prepayment, that comes with a performance bond. So if the company goes under, we paid our money, we get our money back through the performance bond, so the borough's investment's secure, correct? Correct. They would, they would uh, provide a performance bond. Um, the other thing that when we get into the details, and you know, we could provide, we have the information we can provide, and um, um, however the council will want to do it, perhaps the borough attorney, or the uh, bird administrator, uh, they do provide. So the build air, the build time is between two and three years. So when we talk to them about what is the risk, number one, you get a discount by prepaying, and they provide a performance bond. So the borough's uh, prepayment is secured by the bond. On the other side of it, we're asking them about what is the risk for an increase during the two and a half years, because that's something that we've seen in other departments where. They made a purchase, and the manufacturers have come in now and said, "Hey, by the way, here's here's what you bid, but now here's your new price." Um, they they provide in their quote a specific index, where they say if that index increases by X percent over a specific period of time, that could trigger an increase. They claim that 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 index has never been it's that in, that percentage has never happened, but that's something that's that's in the statement, something we could evaluate. But um, so it's not a blanket risk as an increase. And what the salesperson says is that that trigger has never has not happened. But that's something that is we've had those discussions with the uh, with the salesperson. And there uh, that's something we can clearly discuss and, and show. Can you negotiate the cap on that index, though? I don't believe so. That's kind of locked, I think, into their terms and pretty standard. Okay. Yeah. And the benefit we have going the way we're going is shrinking the time significantly. So I think the risk, the corresponding risk decreases uh, based on the time that we're on. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Bye. Thanks. Mr. Godhelf. Right. Switch gears here. theme of this week's been brevity, so. I was just about to say, we'll, uh, can you please yes. adhere to that? Um, so usually I use this time as a good opportunity to just talk a little bit about what OEM does. My apologies, I left all the sheets on my printer at home. I can, <laughs> I can resend all this stuff around so it's in front of everyone. But um, certainly there's a lot of stuff we do uh, for a small organization as part-time employees here. Um, so I won't go through the whole list here, but there, there's certainly a lot of stuff that we do to support the town in, in different events. 
A um, couple numbers, um, you know, my position is uh, through a state statute to appoint someone for three years. Um, talking with Katie, we recovered uh, $320,000 through FEMA funds over the last three years, through different storms we've had. Uh, we looked at 10 different weather events last year that could have impacted the town. We had five minor flooding events. Uh, we did two training exercises last year. And um, my term will end this year, and we can, we can talk about that in the next few months. Um, I'll go through these real quick. Uh, two past capital projects I want to talk to. This one, we're 95% uh, of the way there. Uh, all the equipment was installed about two weeks ago. They had one broken part uh, that they should be back. Um, they were supposed to be here yesterday. Hopefully, they're back this Friday to uh, finish that piece and also do some training so that the, the, the room could be as useful as possible. Uh, another large project that we uh, finished off last year was our communications project that equipped every firefighter, every police officer, um, and some members of our, our public works department uh, with new radios. So this was a uh, you know, huge uh, opportunity for, inter for interoperability, both in Oradell uh, and through our neighboring towns, county, and, and state resources. Uh, so for operating requests for 2024, really a, a very small increase. Two things that we saw pop up in 2023 were um, some of the pesky um, IT fees that we didn't account for um, and some new memberships and, and training that came up. So those are really the only two increase, uh, two items that I'm um, asking to be included this year. I think some of the original numbers uh, we had talked about early on were around the lightning detection system. Um, I think just in the last week or so, we've decided we're going to leave that with REC and keep that out of the um, emergency management budget. Joe, that was the uh, for the equipment maintenance line item? It was under, I originally had it under equipment maintenance right, when we ended last year. And uh, just the structuring of how the operations that work, we thought was better, better, better served uh, with REC than with OEM. Thank you. So I'm proposing three projects for this year. Uh, one is our unmanned aircraft systems program, otherwise known as a drone program. Uh, we have one additional uh, equipment purchase, and this is an, a, a, a one change I had made since submitting. Uh, one additional piece of uh, communications equipment and also a replacement of vehicle, as we've discussed in the past. So this is a, a pretty cool program. A lot of uh, towns are doing this. Um, this is um, something OEM is trying to spearhead, but certainly partnering very closely with the police department and fire departments uh, on getting this program off the ground. Uh, there's lots of opportunities here that can be used from a police perspective, from a fire perspective, from an OEM perspective, uh, both in uh, immediate emergencies, but also in times of uh, events, pre-planning events, uh, and really anything else where we need to um, provide better security or evaluation of, um, of an event going on. So there's a, a budget proposed here for one type of drone. Um, there's certainly opportunities for us to look for a smaller version of this, um, similar to what we're proposing here. Uh, some questions have come up around uh, resources in the area that have drones. There's certainly opportunities with, um, with Bergen County, uh, but we thought having something local, like we have so many other resources locally here, that it could be uh, deployed much quicker than having to call someone that might be further away. So again, this we thought was a great program, um, making firefighters drone pilots, OEM personnel drone pilots, and certainly police officers drone pilots as well. Any I questions think it's a, on this? It's a good idea. So, so this is for only one drone? This is one drone. This is a larger drone. Okay. Uh, uh, towns like Paramus and Hackensack have ones that are about half the size of the table that are roof mounted. Um, that's not what I'm proposing here. Um, that's a little bit smaller. It would still need to uh, be brought to a scene to uh, to fly. Yeah. Uh, late entry. Uh, one additional need for one other piece of communications equipment here. Uh, this is very similar to what I've proposed in the past. And again, we'll just add to the inventory of, of radios that we have. So this is just a one-off walkie-talkie one? Yeah, so I know this has come up a lot. The radios used to be about $1,200. Um, and then the uh, Motorola, um, over the last couple of years, the, the price of the equipment, it's not just the hardware, it's the software that's in, there, uh, that's in there as well. Almost every feature you add 
to it is almost a thousand dollars, and we've uh, un it, it's more economical to purchase them, purchase them up front than realize you need them down the road, and it becomes double the cost. But my question about one-off is, don't you doesn't OEM already have? Yes. So this would be used for what? This is for OEM for one additional radio that we need. Okay. Um, and then finally is our vehicle. Uh, this is something uh, that is a 2003 vehicle. Uh, we had two major issues last year uh, with the brakes failing, uh, which is an exciting experience going down Kinnerkamack Road. Um, and then another experience where the exhaust uh, fell out of the bottom of the truck. So um, both of those have been repaired, um, but wanted to put this in again this year. Um, my whole objective here is to really just reset the clock uh, for the next 20 years for, uh, for this role and for this position in the, the Office of Emergency Management. Any questions? You're going to use the new car for 20 years? I... Well, I hope so. How many <laughs> if, times if you'll have me. How many times have you put this in your budget? Uh, the, I've only been in this role for three, so this will be the third year. <laughs> Is it possible that we can repurchase, uh, re, um, Purpose. Purpose. repurpose the um, one of these vehicles from the police? Yes. That's coming off. And perhaps. Uh, yeah. Okay. Is it perhaps? Perhaps. Okay. I think it's finite. Okay. Joe, I got one more question about yes, sir. the drone. Um, yes. Is there any like warranty program from the manufacturer or something? Because you know if that drone. <laughs> yeah, we um, there, there's some diff it de depending on where we land and, and the funding available. We would talk about warranties, extended warranties, service contracts. Uh, it would really just depend on. Um, the answer is yes. It would just depend on on how much funding we want to put put towards it. All right. And how many? Uh, people would be trained to be able to operate? That's a good question. So um, let me elaborate on the, on the number here. Part of this is to uh, send folks to training and also certify them on the use. So we're looking uh, for about eight people. It would be, uh, I'm sorry, eight to 10 with a mix from police, fire, and OEM. And that's included in the 18? That's included in the 18. The hardware itself uh, comes out to about 12 and the other six is for, for training and licensing. Do you have a ballpark for the annual, like, uh, it was fee? It was built into it, I think, uh, I think it was a thousand or so that was built into it. Do you know how often a person needs to be recertified? Uh, as long as you have a training log. So if you, if you, so part of the program is to actually make a real program and you have to say that we're gonna train our pilots uh, 24 hours a year. And so as long as you're meeting those requirements, if someone ever came in and asked for your training, you know, the FAA comes in after your training records, as long as you're showing that you're, you're training on a regular basis and it meets the, the town's requirements, that, that's what's needed. Any further questions? No. Nope. Thank you very much, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. a quick five minute recess before we convene the work session.
I love the twenty-one hotel. years. Our anniversary is Wednesday. No. But I thought you were going to say no. no. in a government vehicle. No, no, no. no. Uh, Our anniversary is tomorrow. Actually, it's tomorrow. Wow. Yeah, it's twenty-one years. Do that. Yeah. Yeah, you can. It's open, Eric. Yeah, that's my point. There are more of them. Uh-oh, wait, where am I I've done this. Mm-hmm. So my... Yeah. I guess it's sort of a nephew that's really like a second cousin from my husband. So he's here in Alabama. He's maybe 22 now, but I remember when he was doing all his... It's a very impressive yeah. thing. Can we hate that? Can we go forever? Yeah. It's a good thing for you, isn't it? Oh. Yo, wait. It's your coffee. Water. If you want that. Yeah. 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 Really is the great yeah. Tell the whole town, Ted. Okay. <laughs> okay, everybody all set? Uh, where's the yeah, manager? Oh, here he is. Oh, oh, here he is. <laughs> okay. Call the borough council meeting for Tuesday, April 9th, 2024 to order. Notice of this meeting was published in the official newspapers and prominently posted in Borough Hall and filed with the municipal clerk in accordance with the requirements of the Open Public Meetings Act. Uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Palazzo, would you lead us off? Yeah. I pledge pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States States of America America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice justice for all. Thank you. Laura, can we have a roll call, please? <clears throat> Mayor Koth? Here. Mr. Carnival? Here. Mr. Staff? Here. Mr. Tashian? Here. Mr. Schoenberg is not here this evening. Mr. Kern? Here. Mr. Gallo? Yes, here. Okay. We're starting off uh, this evening's work session with a presentation about an Eagle Scout project for Mr. Gerard Palazzo. If you'd come up to the microphone and tell us all about your project. <clears throat> Um, good evening, Mayor and Council. My name is Gerard Palazzo, and I'm a Life Scout with Troop 36 in Orido. I would like the Council's approval to complete my Eagle, Pro- Eagle Scout project. I am working with New Hope Pregnancy Resource Center in Westwood to have a newborn necessities drives, items such as onesies, diapers, wet, wet wipes, and other essentials. New Hope is a nonprofit organization that helps single or unprepared mothers for motherhood. No one is turned away. I plan on organizing my troop to hand out bags with a list of items requested by New Hope on one weekend and then collect it and collect any donations the following weekend. After that, the items will be sorted and delivered to New Hope for distribution. I hope to have this organized for the first and third weeks weekends in June 2024. Thank you very much for your time. Does anyone have any questions? But thank you for doing that. It's a great project. Yeah. Thank, yeah. Thank, thank you very you. much, thank and you. best of luck thank you. to your success. Thank you. There we go. That was easy. Thanks, Tam. Good now go to the confirmation process. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now you can go home and study. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, maybe. <clears throat> okay, next item on the agenda is a proclamation for National Child Abuse Prevention Month. I think we have some representatives from the Women's Club. Book and Needle Club. I'll read fast at the podium. Come on over, ladies. Don't be shy. He doesn't bite. I don't bite. <laughs> I am going to read this quickly, though. So we have a proclamation on behalf of the mayor and council to recognize National Child Abuse Prevention Month. It reads as follows. Whereas children's are, children are our nation's most vulnerable members, as well as our nation's most valuable resources, helping to shape the future of New Jersey. And whereas positive childhood experiences, like loving caregivers and safe, stable, and nurturing relationships can help mitigate trauma and the negative impact of adverse childhood experiences to promote social, 
emotional and developmental well-being of children and whereas childhood trauma can have long-term psychological emotional and physical effects throughout an individual's lifetime and impact future generations of their family and whereas childhood trauma including abuse and neglect is a serious problem affecting every community in the united states and finding solutions requires input and action from everyone and whereas children who live in families with access to concrete economic and social supports are less likely to experience abuse and neglect, and whereas prevention is possible because of the partnerships created between families, prevention advocates, child welfare professionals, education, health, community, and faith-based organizations, businesses, law enforcement agencies, and local, state, and national governments, and whereas we acknowledge that in order to solve the public health issue of abuse and neglect, we must work together to change hearts and mindsets through storytelling and sharing, center the needs of families, break down bias and barriers, and inspire action from expected and unexpected partners in prevention. And whereas we are committed to advancing equitable, responsive, and effective systems that ensure all children and families are healthy and thriving, and whereas we recognize the need to prioritize kids and invest in more prevention initiatives like home visiting and family strength strengthening policies, economic supports, and community-based child abuse prevention programs at the national, state, and local levels. Now, therefore, I, James Coth, Mayor of Oradell, New Jersey, do hereby proclaim April as National Child Abuse Prevention Month in Oradell and urge all citizens to recognize this month by building a narrative of hope for children and families throughout collaboration and the creation of an ecosystem of primary prevention. Ladies? Thank you. Thank you. Want to take a picture? Mm -hmm. You guys want a picture, don't you? <laughs> sure. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, um, Absolutely. Thank you very much. Sorry about this. I just need her face. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, Sorry. That's okay. Oh. Oh. My face. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been told that in a long time. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank Anyone you care so to much? say anything? Yes. Yes. Okay. I have a little steak. Thank, Thank you. you. We got tables, chairs. Thank you. On behalf of the members of the Book and Needle Women's Club of Oradell, we thank the Oradell Mayor and Council for recognizing the month of April as Child Abuse Prevention Month. The Book and Needle Women's Club of Oradell is a strong advocate for the protection of children's rights and has been since our inception in 1915. We're a group of active and dedicated women from Bergen County who serve many segments of our community, including veterans, the homeless, those who suffer from mental illness. We donate food to several local food pantries, and some of our members also deliver meals to homebound seniors through the New North Jersey Meals on Wheels program. We welcome new members and can be contacted through our Facebook page or our website, oradellbookandneedle.org. And by the way, when you visit the Oradell Public Library this month, check out the pinwheel garden our members planted last Friday to recognize Child Abuse Prevention Month. The pinwheel represents a happy childhood that we wish for all children. Thank you again for your support. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have a very long agenda for tonight's work session. Mm -hmm. Old business. Mayor, I have. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, very quickly, I just want to let the residents know that, and I mentioned this earlier in a, another session, that on April 14th, um, Valley Hospital will be transitioning from Ridgewood to Paramus. So at that Sunday, I'm sure there'll be a lot of traffic and a lot going on on the roads, but just wanted the residents to know. Uh, Mayor, yes, sir. Uh, I wanted to ask if, uh, at the conclusion of the public meeting, we could have a closed session uh, to discuss a potential 
matter, litigation matter? Um, it's not listed on the agenda. I advertised the the annual one that from time I that it can occur at any of the meetings. Okay. Um, it's up to you. You if they want a motion to go into close at the end, and then come back out or or adjourn from with the door. However, that's how it was done. Yeah, we could do a motion to go into close at the end of <clears throat> after we've business, adjourned, mm -hmm. and then prior to adjourn, reconvene and then adjourn. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Thank you, Jim. Um, go ahead, Ted. I actually have one thing. Um, Ordo Little League opening day is this Saturday and prospect for a very short period of time in the morning between church and center will be closed due to the parade they're going to do. They are going to reopen the roadway after about an hour of it being closed. Um, but there will also be food trucks and other things available. The community is welcome. It's just not for Ordo Little League and families. So that was previously approved, obviously, at a meeting closure okay in good taste i have one matter for old business after our uh, young fisherman came to speak to us at the last meeting <laughs> i'm going to give a shout out to him and his friends weston matthew mikey and jack who the five of them combined caught a 15 pound striped bass <laughs> underneath the elm street bridge in the area that was prohibited for fishing so, not bad. How more, more than I've caught in a while. <laughs> okay, any new business? Hearing none, we're going to segue into public comment. Paul, I will be very clear on this. This is, covers the work session. It also covers the consent agenda. So feel free to touch on both. So do I get extra time because I have two items? No, no. <laughs> no, we've given you the courtesy of moving this earlier in the meeting so you don't have to wait sometimes for hours on end to get up and say what you have to say. We've elevated this because our residents are very important and we want to hear from you. Well, I looked on the uh, Oradell site and uh, I did the uh, e-code and it had uh, uh, two sessions. One for regular public comment and one for the uh, resolutions comments. It's the, so the e Paul, just an version. FYI, your five minutes is ticking, so use it wisely. I just want to point out the e code doesn't get updated. Don't press me, okay? A, don't press me. The, I don't all need the ordinances that. for six months get sent right. in, and the budget has to get adopted yep. for me to pay the bill. So. so, the new ordinance that speaks to the order of the meeting is not yet on e code. It was just adopted the probably meeting. two meetings ago by the mayor and council. So, it'll take a little time for that to get updated on the website. Well, I still think that uh, it's curtailing uh, public speech, and uh, I don't. Uh, I don't want to read the First Amendment. <laughs> I think you all know what it is. Uh, now, I had some things I wanted to say, and I wanted to talk about Shiraz Park, that it could be designated as a cultural art and festival center, where we can have our holiday celebrations and take place for all inclusive religious holidays there instead of in front of city hall and for art and music educational exhibits i just wanted to put that in there now the other thing uh, is that uh, the affordable housing thing that we're going into now with the uh, department of community affairs giving us the, uh, the they're going to give us the uh, how many uh, units we're going to have to have, but we don't know yet, right? Okay. Uh, it seems that they, they have this as a, it's an ongoing thing, and it's very fast, and we have to meet all these obligations very fast. And from what I remember from the last time, it took us quite a while to do our uh, uh, master plan. And uh, I think that we have to get, like, right, right on it in order to meet this June... Uh, what is this? Uh, I think it's a June uh, a June deadline. Well, June thirtieth deadline. Yeah, right. yeah. For that. So uh, the other thing is uh, on the agenda that you had tonight. I did have something that I wanted to comment on. 
and that is I don't know what the QPA is, uh, initials, and I would hope that when we put things down on the agenda, we spell them out instead of having all of these initials, because most people don't know what all these initials are. Qu qualified Purchasing Agent. Okay. So, uh, now, what what is uh, the real estate person going to do now? Is he going to be uh, uh, purchasing real estate for us? What is he going to do? So we're looking for somebody to help us on an as-needed basis, yeah. i.e. there's been discu some discussions at the council level before about perhaps purchasing the property behind the church. There may be other things about purchasing property preserved for open space. We'd like to be able to have somebody with expertise in real estate acquisition counsel us when needed to assist us in making those transactions so we're not doing that blindly on our own. Okay, but uh, now I understand we're going to need a planner also. Correct. And that's not on the agenda. Uh, the RFQ was approved in the January meeting. So uh, for qualifications for planners to be selected. So we we have our current planner from 2023 carrying over until such time as we make a decision. Okay. Well, if I if I started talking about the affordable housing and what I think we should be doing is, if we do this in that area of Kinderkamac Road, 690, that area there, uh, when we do this with the uh, developer, I think that we should obligate the developer to also pay for the infrastructures. That should be part of the bargain if he's going to get, if they're going to get that. If we need certain infrastructure that has to be done there, they have to agree to that. Otherwise, they're not going to get it. Yeah. This is my feeling on that. I don't disagree. Yeah. I would say perhaps some of these comments around affordable housing may be better served at the planning board who will be dealing with it and undertaking the master yeah. plan review. I would, because we're probably going to need a traffic light there. We're going to need all kinds of things. You know what? I don't know what we're going to do yeah. to address this issue. Uh -huh. I've said this before this bill became a law. It's an awful law. It's unreasonable. It's capricious. But we have to comply with it or we're going to lose um, our protection. So there are a number of fast approaching deadlines. Um, for transparency's sake, maybe that's something we'll talk about um, putting on the website just so people can have an understanding of the process, nothing to hide there. Um, and we're, we're going to do our best to make sure that we're ahead of this in uh, doing what Oradell needs to do to create opportunities for affordable housing but not have the, bur the character of the borough drastically changed by this law. Right. Well, I, I kind of believe that uh, that's probably the only site where we can do anything like that at present. I don't see any other areas that we would not do harm to other people. And like I said, when, whatever we do, we shouldn't have, uh, we shouldn't do any harm to people. Let's get something done, but not hurt anybody in the process of doing something, in whatever we do in the town. You know? And uh, one other thing, uh, somebody asked me last uh, meeting, after the meeting, why I didn't ask about what was in closed session. And, and so I just wanted to uh, let you know, I don't know if you knew that uh, we used to ask uh, for the topics of closed session uh, at, the, at the meeting. And the lawyer that we had before, Mr. Otto, I think his name was, uh, he would uh, give us uh, the topics so that people would know what we're uh, talking about. I don't know if you want to continue that or not. I don't see any problem with provi yeah. providing the general topic on what Just general topics. It's right, yeah. The personnel, for example, can't yeah. get into contract No, you can't get into, uh, but, you know, right. uh, yeah, I have no, no problem. Litigations sure. and stuff. Just no just say that that's the, the topic and that's it. No problem. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, hope you change your mind, though. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of closed anymore. So. <laughs> okay. Anybody else from the public care to speak? Seeing none, I'll close the uh, meeting to the public and we'll uh, move on to the consent agenda. All resolutions on the consent agenda have been posted on the bulletin board. Does any member of the council wish to pull and discuss a resolution separately? <coughs> Hearing no uh, 
Motion no to request to poll. We have second. a motion to approve and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Motion carries. Okay, we're on to ordinances. Council President Carnival. Thank you, Mayor. Um, ordinance number 24-02 <clears throat> is ready for final reading. Will the borough clerk read ordinance number 24-02 by title only? An ordinance amending chapter 240 entitled Land <clears throat> Development of the Borough of Oradal Code. Has ordinance number 24-02 been published in full, posted on the bulletin board, and made available to the members of the general public? Yes. Is there any member of the general public who wishes to be heard concerning this ordinance? Seeing none, is there any member of the council who wishes to discuss this ordinance further? Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that ordinance number 24-02 be passed on final reading and published in the Bergen Record on Monday, April 15th, 2024. Second. Give a roll call vote, Laura. Uh, Mr. Carnival? Yes. Mr. Staff? Yes. Mr. Tashian? Yes. Mr. Kern? Yes. Mr. Gullo? Yes. Mayor, we have a, uh, another ordinance for second and final reading. Ordinance number 24-03 is ready for final reading. Will the borough clerk read ordinance number 24-03 by title only? An ordinance amending chapter 115-27 entitled recreation fees. Has ordinance number 24-03 been published in full, posted on the bulletin board, and made available to members of the general public? Yes. Is there any member of the general public who wishes to be heard concerning this ordinance? Seeing none, is there any member of the council who wishes to discuss this ordinance further? Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that ordinance number 24-03 be passed on final reading and published in the Bergen Record on Monday, April 15th, 2024. Second. Second. Laura, can we have a roll call, please? Mr. Carnival? Yes. Mr. Staff? Yes. Mr. Tashian? Yes. Mr. Kern? Yes. Mr. Gullen? Yes. And lastly, Mayor, we do have an ordinance ready for its first reading, but we were discussing um, making uh, a minor change to prepare. Mayor, if I may. Please. Um, th this uh, ordinance came up. This is the ordinance that deals with prohibiting fishing on the north and south sides of the Oradell Avenue Bridge and the east and west sides of the Elm Street Bridge, which uh, we had some members of the public commenting on it at our last meeting, and there was discussion about deleting that section um, because I'm not sure it totally captures really the intent of the borough here. It actually doesn't address the bridges, which I think is the primary concern from a safety standpoint, among other things. So we can still introduce it tonight. I can verbalize some language right now, um, and then I'll send Laura the typed version tomorrow to be published in the paper and then at a public hearing later this month or, you know, at a following meeting. So what I would suggest is that in uh, Chapter 151-1, entitled Areas Where Fishing is Prohibited, that uh, Subpart A uh, currently says on north and south sides of the Oradell Avenue Bridge. I would just say prohibited on the Oradell Avenue Bridge. And then the same for Subpart B. It says on the east and west sides of the Elm Street Bridge and just say on the bridge because I think that's really the goal. Uh, again, for a safety standpoint and jurisdictional issues and things like that. So with that statement, if someone wants to move that introduction, uh, in introducing uh, that amendment to Chapter 151-1 with those clarifications, and I'll get the language again to Laura tomorrow and published. Okay. Are members of the council okay with that? Yeah. Yes. Second. That's good. Uh, we don't need that. We just need Steve to continue. Yes. So ordinance number 24-4 is ready for first reading. Will the borough clerk read ordinance number 24-4 by title only? An ordinance of the borough of Oradell amending chapter 151-1 of the co borough code. <clears throat> and mayor, as far as the, explan uh, the explanation statement, uh, I think yeah, we just... our council and our council lawyer uh, provided a good one, so thank you. Okay, thanks. Um, I'd like to make a motion that ordinance number 24-4 as uh, verbally amended be passed on first reading and published in the Monday, April 15th, 2024 edition of the Bergen Record. I second as amended. Laura, can we have a roll call, please? Sure. Mr. Carnival? Yes. Mr. Staff? Yes. Mr. Tashian? Second. Yes. Mr. Kern? Yes. Mr. Gullo? Yes. 
And that's all for ordinances, Mayor. Thank you, Steve. That brings us to adjournment. Um, I know. Motion oh, I'm to have a, motion to uh, go I spoke to, to the council president on Friday about a potential litigation matter. We could have a brief closed motion session to go on that. Closed. Second. Okay. And if I could just state for the record that um, we're going into closed session to discuss pending litigation pursuant to subsection 7 of the Open Public Records Act. Um, and although the governing body will come out of closed session to adjourn the meeting formally, it's not expected at all that any action is going to be taken at that time. Okay. We're not looking for authorization or anything like that, just an update and to discuss some legal issues with the council. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Great. Thank you. We'll be back. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>